Now if we go back to the idea of balancing equations, we have to realize that these these coefficients right here represent the number of moles that are necessary for this reaction to occur. So I need two moles of water to form two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. So these coefficients, although they're nice and useful for balancing the equation, they also give you quantitative data as far as the number of moles that are necessary to react with one another. Nitroglycerin is used as a blasting cap. A blasting cap is a device used as a primary explosion to set off a larger, a larger charge. How many grams of water will be a um, 100 gram blasting cap produce? So I'm trying to figure out, okay, this is what I have for nitroglycerin. That's a pretty complicated formula, but really what it ends up being is you take 100 grams of nitroglycerin. I'm just going to abbreviate it NG. You should be able to take this compound right here and turn it into a molecular mass. You should be able to say how many oxygens there are, how many nitrogens there are, how many carbons there are, and how many hydrogens there are. The resulting molecular mass of nitroglycerin is 227.1. That's the number of grams per one mole. Now the question asks us specifically about water. So if we were to look at this, we can create what's called the molar ratio. One mole of nitroglycerin results in the production of two moles of water. The reason why I know that is, there is no number here, which means the coefficient of this is 1. The coefficient of water is 2, therefore I have converted from 1 mole of nitroglycerin to 2 moles of water. The last thing that I would do is I would say 1 mole of H2O is 18.02 grams. I would multiply it out, and when I do that I get 15.9 grams of water, which is not very much especially when you're setting off a 100 gram charge of nitroglycerin. Okay, the next example that we have says how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced when 18 gallons of octane are combusted in the presence of excess oxygen. So that's a key right here. And what that lets me know is that I have enough oxygen to make this reaction occur because we will talk about limiting reagent after this. So we start off with a little dimensional analysis where we say we have 18 gallons of octane. Okay, the first thing that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to get to something that we can work with. So we look at one gallon and we say that one gallon is 2.6 kilograms and that comes from this ratio right here. And then one kilogram is a thousand grams. So now I've got it in grams of octane which I can deal with but really what I need to get it to is I need to get it to oxygen. Remember, to go from one substance to another, you need a balanced chemical equation. So we start off with the idea of oxygen, or excuse me, octane being combusted. Well, here's octane that was given to me. The process of combustion from earlier in this lecture means you add oxygen to it and you produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, now that you know that, you should be able to write a balanced chemical equation for this. And when you do, you end up getting 2, this ends up being 18, this ends up being 16, and this ends up being 25. And you can check me on that, but everything balances out at that point. So once you get to the idea that you have 1,000 grams of octane, you can say that there are 114.22 grams of octane in one mole of octane. And now I use my molar ratio. I would say that there are two moles of octane, and that is used to produce, and in this case we are looking for carbon dioxide, 16 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, the last thing that it asks you to do, well that's actually it, it says how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced. So we don't actually have to finish it and go to grams. So we can go ahead and multiply this thing out, and when we do, we end up getting, well, I figured it out for grams, which was 1.4 times 10 to the fifth grams of CO2, but if you actually answer the question that it asks you to solve for, you would say that it is about 3,181 moles of carbon dioxide, which is quite a bit.
Last concept that we need to talk about in this um, summer assignment is the idea of a limiting reagent. Now you explored the idea of a limiting reagent in your first year of chemistry whenever you explored the idea that you will always want to run out of one reactant before you run out of another, at least in a realistic situation. Okay, you're not always going to have the exact amounts necessary for a reaction to occur. So you need to be able to identify what the limiting reactant is and then use that to predict how much is in fact made. So we see that in the example J1. It says, what is the limiting reagent if, in the equation below, 10 grams of NaCl is added to 1 liter of solution along with 25 grams of uh, silver nitrate? So if you look at this, this liter has nothing to do with it. Okay, That's just the water that you're adding it to, and that will we'll, that'll give us concentration that we'll talk about later. But realistically, I have 10 grams of sodium chloride. So I have 10 grams of NaCl and then I can look at the molar mass of NaCl and I can figure out that it is 58.44 grams is one mole. Next I can say that I need one mole for one reaction to occur because this right here is one. And then I can say that I can make 0.1711 reactions occur as a result of this. And then in the other one I can say that I've got 25 grams of silver nitrate which means I have more. A lot of people say, well, if there's more of it, you automatically got to go with the one that you have more of. But if you look, silver nitrate has a gram formula mass of 169.88 is one mole. And then you can say that one mole is one reaction because, once again, there's no coefficient, so you can assume that it's one. Once you get to here, you say there are 0.1472 reactions. And the limiting reactant is the one that always you can do the least number of reactions with. In that case, I can one point or excuse me, 0 0.1472 is less than 0 0.1711. Therefore, silver nitrate is what we call the limiting reactant. We would call sodium chloride the excess reactant. It's the one that you're going to have left over in the solution whenever this thing happens. So that's the one thing. If somebody asks you what or asks you what's going to be in the solution at the end of the reaction, you would have sodium nitrate, you would have silver chloride, and then you would also have sodium chloride. Okay, you would not have any silver nitrate though. So let's look at the last example. And the last example says 30 grams of copper combines with 100 grams of tellurium to form copper telluride. How many grams of copper telluride are produced? So if you look, you have copper plus telluride is going to go to copper telluride. And so whenever you look at this, you have the idea um, that's our reaction that's going to occur. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So we would say that we have 30 grams of copper and then there are 63.5 grams of copper in one mole of copper. And then you can say that there's one mole of copper in one reaction. So I produce 0.472, excuse me, 0.472 reactions with copper. I do the same thing with tellurium, 100 grams of tellurium. And I would say that there are 98 grams of tellurium and one mole of tellurium. And then I would say one mole is one reaction. If you look, there are 1.02 reactions. So 0 0.472 is my limiting reagent. So if I'm trying to predict how much is actually made at this point, I would use my limiting reactant. So I'd start off with the idea that I have 0 0.472 reactions and in one reaction I produce one mole of CUTE and then one mole of CUTE ends up having a mass of 161.55 grams. Multiply it out and you end up getting 76.25 grams of copper telluride. Now this right here is what we call the uh, theoretical yield. Now we will explore later in this year how we never actually reach the theoretical yield in, a, in an experimental situation. Instead, we actually get something called the actual yield, 
and we compare the actual yield and the theoretical yield in order to figure out the percent yield. But there's more on that later.